Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel. We are back again with our connection finding love app. Um, as you remember, we first built this up in a, in a uh, UI focused video. Next thing we did was we added Firebase for authentication. And during that first video, we were able to sign in users, create users using uh, email and password. And what I wanted to do today, what I promised you guys we would do, is we would look into signing in with Facebook and Twitter. And this video is going to be simply adding Facebook authentication to our app. So without further ado, let's get started. First thing I wanna do is I want to install a package that's gonna make this uh, all very easy for us. And that's called Flutter Facebook Login. So as usual, click on the installing tab, go ahead and copy the dependency. And I did look at this before recording the video um, just to get an idea of how difficult it was going to be. And it does not seem, there's a lot of configuration involved, but it's not actually that difficult. So let's go ahead and get started here with the Android part. Um, go ahead and open up this link here, the Facebook login documentation. And what we wanna do is create a new app. Now this may require that you guys actually have a Facebook for developers profile. Um, I must have created one a while back. So if you haven't done that, um, pause the video, go ahead and get, get yourself started and then come right back. Okay, so next thing we're gonna do is create a new app. And what we have to do here is display a, or choose a display name. So as our app is called, connection i'm just going to say connection okay we can skip a few of the steps because we're using this flutter package and this is assuming that we're just using a vanilla android application so we can skip past some of this let's go oh, let's go to step five here um this here you guys should be familiar with from my previous videos um you have to get your package name and then the activity name and these are both found in your if you go to android studio or to your visual studio code and you look inside of the android manifest okay guys once you've gotten those two from your android manifest click on save you're going to get this error message saying that they weren't able to find your application on google play and you can ignore this if you haven't actually published, which we haven't. So go ahead and ignore that. Next thing we need to do is get what is called a development and release key hash. So go ahead and just hit copy code, open up your terminal. Okay, once you have entered that into your terminal, you'll ha you may have to enter a password, um, which is simply just your user password for your computer. <clears throat> and once you've done that, you should be able to get the code, copy, and we're going to paste it here. And then hit save. Don't know if that's saved. Okay. If you want to, you guys can play around with some of these other settings. Um, but those are the two main things that we needed to do. Okay. So those two are complete. Um, feel free to look at here, like the using the Facebook login buttons. All of this stuff is optional for us. So let's go back to the um, instructions here. And we're going to need to copy and paste this into this strings.xml. And if we don't have one, create it. So let's go Android app source main res values. It's a lot, right? So Android app source main res values. So we don't have that strings file, so we need to go ahead and create it. Click on values, resource file, enter strings. Okay, it's empty, of course. So now let's go ahead and copy this. Just paste over the resources. And then we need to get our Facebook app ID that we just got and paste it in here where these zeros are. 
Let's go ahead and copy. Paste here. Paste here and make sure you keep the FB, like it says in the comments here. Save. Again, go back. Follow the instructions again. Copy and paste this into your Android manifest. Let's go ahead and do that. What I'm going to go ahead and do is just paste it here right before this comment saying, do not delete the metadata below. Go ahead and save. Okay, so it appears that we've actually finished with the Android setup. Let's go, with, go ahead with the iOS. I'm gonna go ahead and open this link now. And I'm gonna close the Android one. Okay, so now we're in the iOS side. Let's go ahead and search for our app. Connection, that's what we called it. Scroll down. We can Again, we can skip some of these. This bundle ID is the same as the package ID normally. Um, you can get this by open up, opening up Xcode. What I like to do is right click on the workspace and reveal in Finder. Go ahead and double click to open it in Xcode. Under bundle identifier, copy that. Then go ahead and paste it here and hit save. Next thing we have to do, we have to go into the info.plist and paste this code. So copy this. You'll see this info.plist here on the side. Go ahead and open as source code. And then just add the appropriate code that you copied from the Facebook web page. Hit save. Okay. This is an optional thing that we don't need, but look at it if you're ever interested in um, using some of these Facebook dialogues that they're talking about. Don't have to worry about the app delegate and scene delegate, delegate because we're using Flutter. That appears to be it for this part. So let's go back here. And here they're telling us something that we've already just done, which is to add the information to the P list. So we've already done that, so we don't need to worry. So now it says we're done. Um, in our Firebase console, let's go to the Firebase console under authentication and go into sign-in methods because we have not activated yet the Facebook sign-in method. Okay, so you see it's disabled. Let's go ahead and enable it. And now it's asking for two things. The first one is our app ID. So let's go back to our Facebook for developers page. And that's here. And I'm just going to go ahead and click on see all apps. Go here to connection. This is the one that I've just created. All right, guys, so if we're doing this right, uh, you should end up on this sort of dashboard page. You can change between all the possible apps that you've got here. Make sure you're on the right one. Let's click on settings and basic. We need need the app ID, and now you see I've changed into French. If you guys don't know this, I'm actually based in France, so um, it's quite often that I have my websites randomly turning themselves into French, which is fine because I need to practice anyways. Um, but So let's go ahead and copy the app ID, paste it in here, and then to get the app secret, we'll go right back. And now it's actually asking us for our Facebook password. So I'm gonna just enter that in quickly here and we'll jump right ahead. All right, let's go ahead and do that. Now you see the secret key. Let's copy that and paste it into our Firebase console. And the last thing here is an uh, internet address, a URI that we need to copy, and this is going to be pasted into the other side in the Facebook. Okay, guys, if you didn't see what I just did there, is I clicked on the plus sign here under products, I clicked on Facebook login, and then I clicked on parameters. And those might be different because, like I said, uh, I'm in French here now. Um, and 
I found here this is where that OAuth needs to be needs to be pasted. So that's good. Let's go back here and now we are enabled. And now we've actually set up everything uh, in the Facebook developer website and in Firebase. But first we have to go back here and grab um, some example code. We may as well use this. Um, let's grab here. And let's go into Android Studio now. Okay, so now we're in this home sign-in widget, which is the widget that contains these buttons. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and create an auth, a Firebase auth instance. Okay, and then I wanna create a function. And there we'll paste in some of this code. So what we have to do here first is create a Facebook, oops, Facebook login. And then this I believe is the Facebook login. This is an await, so let's make this an asynchronous function. This login with read permissions. I'm assuming that this was an old method that used to exist and has since been changed. So now it's just called login. And it still has uh, the permissions given as an array of string, which we're just gonna leave email like the example code that we got. Uh, the next thing is um, this HTTP. This is a package that we can go ahead and grab. Add this, I'm gonna pause the video now while I restart the app. Okay guys, during the process of restarting the app, I got this error I wanted to show you guys just in case you have the same thing. Um, we're getting an error from CocoaPods, which is the uh, package manager for iOS. And it's saying that the platform iOS uh, version 8.0 is being used by default because no platform was specified. So in order to correct this, let's go back into Xcode, open up the pod file which is located under pods. And you see here up at the top, uncomment this line to define a global platform for your project. And apparently 8.0 wasn't working. I'm not sure what will make it work. Um, normally you wanna use as low a platform as possible so you can include the most users who haven't quite updated, but iOS users are usually pretty good about updating. So I'm not too concerned. I'm gonna put just 13. I'm sure 12, 11, 10 would probably work too. All right, so now I want what I want to do is uncomment in these two lines of code that I commented out because they had errors. Um, remember the whole point of restarting that app was to import HTTP as a package. So now we've got that. Go ahead and name as HTTP. Uh, this, for this, I'm actually just going to, instead of decoding the JSON, I'm actually just gonna print this if we're successful. Um, if we are successful, I want to get the credential. This was all example code that was given to us in the um, Flutter package on the pub.dev. So um, remember guys, it's not cheating to to rely on other people's examples and to to take code and and change it how you would how you how you wish. Um, we're not going to reinvent the wheel every time, right? And that's why people share stuff online. That's why partly why I'm creating this video, right? Is to to figure something out and then to go ahead and show it to you guys. I'm on YouTube all the time trying to figure out how do things work? How do I create certain things using Flutter, using other programming languages that I'm interested in? I'm always looking to learn new stuff. So um, yeah, that's just a little bit of a tangent, but just saying you guys, there's no need to reinvent the wheel. Um, now that we have this, let's go ahead and test it. So this function needs to be called when we click on this button. 
So let's find, here it is, the container. Let's go ahead and wrap that. Create a button out of it. Okay, so what I've done is I removed the email here just because I'm trying to keep my personal stuff personal. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is let's go ahead and test it. This looks very good. This is looking how we would hope. Okay, continue as Ryan in French again. Nice, click here. And voila, there we go. This looks like it's working. Um, the Facebook's login status was turned to login. We therefore signed in, we printed off the Facebook user's name. So if you wanted to, uh, the next step would be to navigate to a new page. Um, you would store the, the email. Um, using this Facebook sign-in makes it easy for your users because then, then they don't have to create yet another account. There's just tons of stuff you can do. They have games on there. They have, you know, obviously Facebook Messenger. There's tons of stuff in there. Sign-in with Facebook is great. In my next video, I, I probably want to dive into sign-in with, sign with Twitter. If it's just as easy as, as this is, uh, that should be a nice short video for you guys just to complete this series. Um, this is something that is extremely useful for tons of different types of applications. Anything that you need to sign in on, maybe as a little teaser here, maybe the next thing that we should do after Facebook and Twitter is we should look at, you know, Face ID and Touch ID on Android and iOS. Um, this is all good stuff that you guys can use to create cool experiences for your users, signing in, making it easier on them so they don't have to enter a password each time. Um, if you guys like these type of videos, let me know in the comments. Give me some suggestions for new videos that you might want to see, things that have been bugging you that you don't know how to do. Please subscribe if you guys like the content and you want to be notified of the next next time my, I put out a new video. I'm just going to keep churning this stuff out. I'm really enjoying it. And thanks, you guys, for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.